React Query is often known as the missing data fetching library for React, where it simplifies the asset management for the server state. But what if we could combine the power of React Query for managing server state with a client asset management library to create a unified asset management solution for application? Let me tell you with an example. Imagine that you have created a to-dos application in React where the user can search for his desired to-do by a simple input field. Also, he can specify which of his accounts to see. And at the end, we are going to pass the entered search term and the selected user ID into a to-dos list component as properties. Now, let's see the implementation of to-dos list component. First of all, we need to create a get function, which is responsible to fetch the to-dos list from our API by providing the user ID and the search term that user has entered. Then for the component itself, first of all, we need to get the search term and user ID as properties. Then with the power of use query hook from React Query, we can simplify the asset management automatically for our query. Then we can provide desired query key for better query management and cache invalidation. And for the main part, we're going to provide the query function, which is responsible to get the data from the server. Now we can simply, based on the state of our query, we can render loading state, error state, and if everything went well, we can render our to-dos by using the data property from our use query. But if you have noticed, there are several issues with this approach. First of all is the annoying prop drilling issue where we need to pass our properties like search term and user ID from to-dos container or the parent component to our to-dos list component. Another one is the reusability of our logic, where if you want to use the to-dos list data anywhere in our application, we need to extract the logic, create a different hook, and also we need to pass the arguments and parameters again. And we need to do it for every instance of use to do's hook that we are going to use in our components. But there is a solution for this issue. But before we continue, did you know that more than 86% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel? If you enjoyed the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's move on with the solution for our issue. But before we deep dive in our solution, we need to talk about one of the best asset management solutions for React. Jotai is a minimalistic asset management library that uses an atom-based approach, which is also created by the creators of Zostand, which also has the easiest learning curve. It's suitable for simplest up to the most complex enterprise level applications. To use it, we need to simply import the atom and use atom hook from Jotai. After that, we can create a state for our primitive types as easy as this. If you recall our previous example, we had a search term and a user ID. Now to make them reusable throughout our application, we can simply create search term atom and user ID atom. Then we are going to pass our desired initial value inside the atom function. And the usage of it is pretty similar to the user state hook of React itself. And the only thing we need to do is to just pass the created search term atom into the use atom hook from Jotai. And exactly like the React user state hook, we're going to get a value and a set value function. Which here I'm going to call them search term and set search term. With this difference that instead of this state being only accessed by this component and its children tree, we have access to it whenever that we want in whatever component that we need it by just passing our created atom inside the use atom hook. And the value of it will be updated throughout our application and it will cause automatic renders for different parts of our UI. And after that, we can simply use the value and its setter function for our input field. And also for our selected user, we can simply again do the same as before. In Jotai, the state is converted into multiple atoms, which is the smallest possible part of our state, where each of our atoms can be used by different components independently. 
Now that we got familiar with Jotai and its atom-based approach, it also provides for us a vast ocean of plugins and extensions. One of the best ones that I encountered is the Jotai Tensor Query Library, which is gonna fill for us the gap between React Query and the Jotai Library. And if you want to use it in your project, just make sure that you have these four libraries installed on your project. The beauty of it is that the Jotai Tensor Query Library provides for us the exact exported APIs that we had access on React Query. But here, for example, instead of use query, we have Adam with query. Or instead of use mutation, we have Adam with mutation. And all of the other functionalities and APIs can be used with this library. To give you an idea, first of all, I need to import the Adam with query from Jotai Tensor Query Library, and also as before, the Adam and use Adam hook from Jotai itself. Then, as before, I define my Adams. Then, instead of using use query hook, I'm gonna use Adam with query function here, which we can access a getter function from its callback, and we can use it to access any part of our state that we want. So instead of passing my user ID or search term from component to this query function, I just need to tell to this getter function here that which atom or part of the state I need to access. Here in this example, I'm gonna use the latest user ID and search term values for my query key and also the same for my query function. And also you can customize the config of your query the same as base use query hook and you can access all of the other APIs here. Now to use it, we just simply need to pass our new created config for our query to our use atom hook as before and as simply as this, we have access to all of the configs, functions and states provided by React Query itself. And also we can use these values to render different parts of our UI. And if you have paid attention, you're gonna notice that there is no need for us to pass our properties from our parent container to our to-dos list or even to our query function because we have directly access to our global state with this combination. And also the same applies for mutation with React Query. He makes the title of his to-do into an atom and imagine that this create to-do function is responsible to create a new to-do on our server but the implementation is not important at all but we need this create to-do function for a mutation to use it we just simply need to create a new atom called create to-do atom or whatever that you want and for its implementation we just simply use the atom with mutation this time and exactly like atom with query we have access to our getter from its callback and we can use this getter to access to different parts of our estate or to be more precise our desired atom we're gonna get our desired value then we are gonna pass it to our create to do function and also we can use all of the use mutation functionalities of react query with atom with mutation function here and to use this mutation atom here we just need to as before initialize our desired atoms and also our create to do atom where we also have access to mutate is pending is error and many other variables exported by react query and we can use these values to handle our form submission and also rendering different loaders and handling errors for our form and also we can track the mutation state from anywhere with atom with mutation consider previous example and imagine that we need to show the user somewhere else in our application that a new to do is creating so we can show different loaders the spinners or even prevent him to access different parts of the UI when something is mutating on our server and many other different possibilities. Imagine that you have a global mutation status indicator and you can use it wherever that you want. We can also create atoms that depend on query results. Consider previous example from Adam with query example, which we created a to-dos atom for our application and now we can drive a new different atom called for example completed 
count atom which here we are reading the latest value fetch from the server for our to do's atom and after that we can do whatever that we want here we are checking that if the data is not there or if it is loading we can return zero otherwise we are gonna filter our to do's with the completed one and then we are gonna return the length of it and to use it we just need to simply pass the completed count atom into the use atom hook get the result of it then we can show the count of our completed to do's in our application this is just one of the many things we can do with jotai and its endless extensions and plugin communities if you want to learn more just let me know and i'll create more videos about it also don't forget to check out my react query course to learn react query from scratch if you found this helpful please like comment and subscribe to support the channel